Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to share with you some patterns of treatment planning for dental implants. This case is just an example, but we would, we would take intraoral photographs and small x-rays like these ones, okay? This is an x-ray here uh, showing the, uh, the condition of the jaw and even the temporal joints. So with these documents, uh, we would make diagnosis and evaluation and assess each risk and systemic disease here. So from here, the treatment plan uh, for the implant begins. Since there are anatomical limitations in both the upper and lower jaw, uh, there are several different approaches. In addition to simple implant placement, there are more complex cases that are a little more difficult to place it simply. So I will present them in order. So in the maxilla, as you can see in this x-ray picture, this cavity in the middle is the nasal cavity. On either side of it is the maxillary sinus cavity, uh, which is the sinus cavity uh, leading from the nose. Uh, this is the part of it. So this is a normal image, but there are spaces like this on both sides of the nose where pus can accumulate in the maxillary and pyena. Okay, so for example, in this case, the two upper, upper left molars are a little difficult to preserve. When planning an implant in, in a case like this, there are cases where there is not enough surrounding bone height to place the implant after a tooth is removed. In such cases, uh, if we just place the implant, it may penetrate into the maxillary sinus and cause maxillary sinusitis, uh, which is sinus inflammation. To prevent that, there is a procedure in which a bone graft is placed at the bottom of the maxillary sinus, which is called maxillary sinus floor elevation. Okay, so I will talk about uh, pattern number one. So pattern number one is simple, a lateral approach uh, to the floor of the maxillary sinus. This is the most predictable and safe way to graft artificial bone into the maxillary sinus here, like here. The drawback, however, is that uh, it's highly invasive. So the possibility of swelling and bruising is to be expected. Damage is quite significant. Nevertheless, the this procedure is a treatment that can safely raise the mucosa of the maxillary sinus enough under the, under the bright vision, opening the side bony wall like, like a door, uh, raising the entire uh, mucosa and placing the graft material uh, there like this. This is pattern number one. So pattern number two is a little less invasive. Uh, in pattern two, a hole is made in the crest of the jaw and the mucosa is elevated through the hole. So this is called the transcrestal approach to maxillary sinus uh, elevation, floor elevation. The transcrestal approach is less damaging uh, to the body and bone, but is technically uh, more difficult uh, because it's performed blindly and the amount of mucosa elevation is limited. The bone is packed through a hole uh, made in the alveolar crest. And if too much is packed, uh, it can happen that the membrane is torn. So if we should uh, cause that, the graft material can scatter uh, into the maxillary sinus and cause sinusitis, uh, which must be avoided, of course. That's why we have to choose uh, between the lateral approach of the transcrestal approach in terms a lateral approach or the transcrestal approach in terms of the amount of elevation. So in this pattern number two, in addition to the one I have just mentioned, uh, guided bone regeneration is also performed. We call it GBR as our abbreviation. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this transcrestal approach uh, is limited uh, in the amount of membrane elevation and grafting. So only a certain amount of grafting material can be placed. When choosing a less invasive approach, uh, GBR is performed on the alveolar crest before the transcrestal approach, instead of lateral approach of sinus floor elevation. The bone uh, is added to the upper portion uh, on the alveolar bone ridge, and then the transcrestal approach is used 
to add bone uh, to the bottom of the maxillary sinus, creating like a sandwich of bone graft material uh, in both the upper and lower portions of the alveolar crest. So pattern number three uh, is GBR only. As I mentioned earlier, only bone is added to the upper part. Uh, in this x-ray picture, the black area here, the, the black area is where there is no bone. Now, uh, there is a tooth here, tooth here, uh, but the bone level needs to be equivalent to the height of the surrounding bone uh, for the implant. Therefore, uh, this black area uh, is where the bone is missing and we should place artificial bone graft material in this area to add bone. If the procedure is successful and sufficient bone is uh, created vertically, the so-called transcrestal approach uh, may not be necessary. However, if sufficient bone is not achieved, it's still necessary to add bone uh, to the base of the maxillary sinus floor uh, using the transcrestal approach. Okay. So pattern number four uh, is a case where GBR is performed first to achieve the same bone height level as possible. And then the lateral sinus lift is performed. When the height of the bone supporting the implant is generally, generally less than five millimeter, uh, it's common to perform a lateral sinus lift because of the limited amount of elevation of the maxillary sinus mucosa. And pattern number five, uh, will be a pattern where only implants are placed uh, without any bone graft material. Uh, this is a figure of another case, okay? So it's possible uh, when there are no anatomical restrictions. Okay, so pattern number, number six is the uh, kind of opposite case, the case where bone has to be removed. So, hold on a moment. Okay, so here. Um, this is another, another case, but uh, if there are no molars and only the, only the anterior teeth remain uh, for a long period of, of time, uh, bone resorption progressively occurs in the back part of the tooth. And sometimes there is excess bone remaining only in the front part. In this case, the bone in the area uh, surrounded by the orange line, like here, uh, must be removed in order to obtain sufficient bone space for the implants. This is pattern number six, okay? So, So these figures uh, show a preoperative simulation of the actual implant placement of that implant. So pattern number one is a sinus lift using the lateral approach. The sinus lift technique is used to add bone safely, uh, but invasively uh, to the area in the maxillary sinus where the bone height is insufficient. The bone in the area surrounded by the line would be increased. And pattern number two is GBR case. So if you look here, uh, this, this light blue area is the part uh, of the fixture, the so-called implant screw. But here looks, uh, here looks uh, black because there is not enough bone in the buccal area. So we would add bone uh, to this area. In addition, for the area protruding uh, into the maxillary sinus, we would add a little more bone uh, using the transcrestal approach. This is pattern number two. And pattern number, number three is GBR, uh, in which the maxillary sinus is not touched at all, and only the bone volume in the missing portion of the alveolar, alveolar crest uh, would be increased vertically. However, uh, this also has a limitation in the amount of bone augmentation and 
it has been reported that it can increase the height only up to four millimeter uh, with the regular method. Okay, and pattern number four uh, is the one of uh, GBR combined with lateral sinus lift procedure. In this orange area, uh, bone would be created vertically by GBR first, and then added from the lateral side uh, approach. The lateral sinus lifting technique is a safe and predictable way to add bone uh, to this area, okay? So pattern number five is a case uh, without bone grafting. This is a mandible case. And the mandible has a large nerve in the lower jaw uh, called the inferior alveolar nerve, uh, which runs along this green line. If there is enough distance uh, to this nerve, uh, even a long implant can be safely placed. So this case is planned with an 8.5 millimeter long implant, but a 10 millimeter length is also possible. So this figure uh, shows a cross-sectional uh, view of the bone uh, in the area where that implant would be placed. Uh, since there is a sufficient jawbone width, uh, this is a case where the implant is simply placed without GBR, okay. And lastly, in pattern number six, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have to remove the protruding bone uh, where there is no space for an implant. Okay, that's all, thank you very much.